Hey, hey, what's up? It's your boy Mike the Dome once again. Coming at you straight from DR. Damn, I was um not shocked, but saddened by the news that homeboy Johnny passed away and, and was buried yesterday. I knew he was going through through some hard times with his health, you know, we we somehow we, we maintained contact, you know, because we knew the same people and stuff like that. But I wanted to do this podcast, you know, to 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 honor his memory. Cause I remember when I got to New York in nineteen seventy four, straight from DR. I lived on 135th between Broadway and Riverside. I remember at the time that they, they were, um, those projects that are there were under construction. The projects were, 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 were not yet finished, but I remember they were under construction in 1974. And me and my sister, we went to PS 192 which was right there, um, 137, 130, 136, 137, 138. It took up, like, Hamilton Place, I think was the name of that street, and Amsterdam. It was a big school. And I was in the fourth grade, I remember, with Mrs. Mrs. Garcia, bilingual class, and my sister was in sixth grade. I, I don't remember her teacher's name, but this was in 1974 when we went to school there. And my sister had classmates that later on became street legends. She was in class with with Johnny, a.k.a. Pinguita. She was in class with Chabelo. And these two dudes, I don't want to mention others because I don't really remember their names, turned out to be street legends later on in life. And I remember we moved to Washington Heights after the school year, 1974. I think in the summertime, we moved to Washington Heights. And my sister went to seventh grade in, in junior high school, 143. But I went to, I still kept going to Pierce 192 to fifth grade until they found out that I had moved. Once that happened, they took me out of Pierce 192 and they transferred me to Pierce 132, which is now um, Juan Pablo Duarte's elementary school on 182nd in Wasworth. But my sister remained going to class with, with, you know, with that same group. I remember they used to do hooky parties at my house because since my sister was with them in sixth grade, when they were in seventh grade together, they would do hooky parties in my house, I remember. And... Most of you know, I mean, Johnny, he's not from Washington Heights, but he's a legend in Washington Heights because all the gangs that were, you know, up and coming, late 70s, 80s, 90s, or, or whatever, knew who Pinguita was, knew who Johnny was, knew who Chabuela was, and, and most of the other cats there, which I don't want to mention, because of the the the, the no, notorious name that they made for themselves and of this crew that from what I I've heard they were some of the you know uh, founders called the ball busters and I remember after I moved to Washington Heights sometimes we would go to Van Cortland swimming pool, you know, to change the scene because we had high bridge. 
on 173rd in Amsterdam. But sometimes, you know, you would take the train on 168 and, and drive all the way up to 242nd Street to go to Van Cortland. And I remember seeing these cats in, in Van Cortland all oiled up, you know, because they, they used to, like, work out wearing these these skimpy Speedo bathing suits walking around the, 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 the swimming pool like 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 Big Daddy King. I remember Chabelo had that big uh, red afro. He was like medio como jabao and shit. And I remember I remember seeing them like, you know, like that. And I remember once I saw Johnny, there was a, a club, I think on 96th and Broadway on the second floor. There was a club there, and I remember passing by. We was cruising. You know how sometimes you get on the car, you be smoking and, and just going down the avenue. And we was passing by on Broadway in 96, and Johnny, I think, was on that club. I, I forgot the name of that club, had come down, and he was either smoking a cigarette or... Or making a, I I don't remember what it was, but I remember this dude dressed up like 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 a rock star with 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 tight pants that looked like 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 snake skin and shit like that, you know, with the boots. <laughs> he was crazy when it came down to to dressing up and, and and being flashy. You know what I'm saying? And I remember once, man, when the ball busters was creating havoc in New York, that they went up to the heights and something happened. I don't remember exactly if, if, if a, 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 a kid, you know, lost his life or something in, in that ruckus. I, I don't remember exactly what it was. And I know that some cats that were not, you know, gang affiliated, but, you know, old timers, went down there and, and like they went in this pizza shop and, and one dude that I went to elementary school with and junior high school with, I remember got shot in his legs behind that. And that was like one of the only times that I seen like all the crews getting together and, and waiting for this big rumble that was gonna happen because the ball busters were coming. I remember Papa 184, Terra, and all them cats came down from, from their territory, which was 183rd and Audubon. They came down to 173rd and Audubon. A little crew, it wasn't much, but they came down to, to, to get together with the Bad Bad Boys, with the Playboys, with the old timers. The whole neighborhood was waiting for <laughs> the busters to come. This was after, you know, the, the kid and the, and the dude that got shot in the leg downtown or whatever. So that day, man, the, the, the signal was to whistle from whatever block they came through so everybody would come to that block. And you know who came by himself? Johnny, man. Johnny came walking. He went walking to 172nd and, and Audubon, if I'm not mistaken. If, 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 if I don't got my facts correct, you can check me on, on the on the comments because I'm not trying to create no. I'm, you know, I'm just doing this for for the memory of Johnny, aka Pinguita. He came and he spoke to some of the OGs from 172nd that he knew wasn't gang related, but he knew that 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 they would bust a cap in your ass. And and he was like, yo, he came like to. School Watch whatever difference it was. I don't know what was said there, but 
you know, after they spoke, they told him, listen, you should, you know, leave the neighborhood quietly because, you know, people are tense behind what happened and stuff like that. And I remember he, he walked back up, you know, 172nd. I don't know if he came on the train. I don't know how he got there. But somehow, when he was walking up 172nd, somebody whistled. And you seen all, all these people coming down from the roof, out of basements and stuff like that, you know, to coming down to 172nd. And, you know, the, the dudes were like, yo, saca pie, saca pie. And he, like, ran and, and disappeared. But I, I will always remember that because it, it takes a real, real, real nigga, you know, a real man con cojones with a tension like that to go to, to a neighborhood which he knew was waiting to, to, to face, you know, the ball busters because they were a big-ass crew, man, you know. I wasn't into gangs. I was into making my money, you know. I, anybody could tell you. Mike the Dome, even though, you know, these gangs were out there, Bad Bad Boys, the Playboys, the Ball Busters, and, and all the other cliques that were either down with the Bad Bad Boys or down with the, with the Ball Busters, most of them knew who Mike the Dome was, and I was into making my money. I would, you know, whatever it took, I was, I was going to do it to make my money and get my money. But I had the respect. First, I went to elementary school with most of these guys in PS192. And, you know, some of my friends, you know, were down there until I moved uptown. And then we went to junior high school together. When I was in, in seventh grade in junior high school, 143, you know, most of them cats, I don't know why they sent them to junior high school so far away from, from their block, because they came from 135th. I remember Pepe. Um, damn, I forget some of their names. But some We were in the same class in seventh grade. So, you know, I remember all this. So I had respect because most of these cats knew who I was from school. I had respect from Washington Heights because most of these cats knew who I was. And after that happened, you know, I never heard or, or, or knew anything about that because a lot of things happened, you know. The neighborhoods changed, the gangs disappeared, people started either getting into habits and, you know, messing up their life. I remember in 1982, I went to Rikers Island for the first time. And at that time, they they had um, done some sort of raid on the ball busters, and a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of them got arrested. So when I got to Rikers Island, even though I'm from Washington Heights, Bad Bad Boys Territory and Playboys, I ran I ran into all these dudes from the ball busters that were in C74, but they didn't see me as somebody from Washington Heights. They saw me as Mike, the dude they went to school with. Yo, what's going on? You need anything? Whatever, whatever. We got your back. What? Pop. They had, yo, there were so many ball busters in C74. I think 1981, 1982, that they had that shit on lockdown. Each house had somebody from the ball busters in there. I ran into them in commissary, on the hallway, and it was crazy. I don't remember what it was, but I remember it came out on the paper that the Bob Busters had been dismantled and, and a whole bunch of them got arrested. We were in Rikers Island together in that year. It was either 81 or 82, if I'm not mistaken. And besides that, in 86, when I was upstate in, in Comstock, I was in there with, with, with a couple of dudes, um, Miguel Boque Perro, you know, he was kind of like retarded, that nigga. <laughs> with a big ass mouth and a big ass jaw. 
um, Pete, if I'm not mistaken. And damn, I forget this dude's name. Um, wow. I think I seen him in, in, in one of the pictures that, that, that was sent to me yesterday from, from, from his days. But, you know, this dude, you know, he, he was a cool dude. He was an original ball buster, too. He was up there with me in Comstock. And never heard about anything, you know. Then, you know, I came out in the 80, 88. I stayed in the streets, 88, 89. And in 90, I went back upstate. I ran into a couple of more, you know, dudes that were doing serious time from from down. I don't know if that's called Washington Heights. I mean, uh, Hamilton Place or, or Hamilton Heights or whatever. I don't know what they call that area there from 135th to, to, to 143 because those were the areas where I lived when I got to New York. I got to New York and lived on 135th between Broadway and Riverside, and then I moved to 143 and, and Broadway on the corner building there. And never heard about, you know, nobody else. Then, you know, I ended up getting reported to DR. And one day, 2011, 2012, I'm in church. That, that was the only way of leaving that life, man. Putting your, your life on, on the hands of God. I'm in church one day, and I see this dude worshiping with his hands in the air. And I said, I know this dude. I know this dude. I took a picture. Pop! And after the service was over, I come up to him and I spoke to him in English. I said, yo, what's up? He said, yo, what's up? I said, what's your name? He goes, Johnny. I said, you from New York? He goes, yeah. I said, and what was your name in the streets? <laughs> he tells me, Pinguita. <laughs> so I said, oh, shit. And we started talking, and I started mentioning, you know, people. And then I mentioned my sister Jenny, and he remembered my sister Jenny from school. So we became tight. We was in the same church for a while, but then I moved and, you know, just seen him in, 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 in a video that uh, a friend, you know, a mutual friend sent, you know, where, where he was in, in, in the hospital. Um, I think he got his, his, his leg cut off. He had... Um, And what was it he had? Diabetes, yeah. He had that diabetes hardcore. And they cut off his leg. And then I seen a couple of pictures of him, you know, um, going to some services that was um, held by by my, my friend, Pastor Salvador Sabino in Santo Domingo. And then we got a video on our, on our chat where he was agonizing, man. I think last month, if I'm not mistaken, with tubes and stuff. He looked like like those patients from COVID from back in 2020. And I was like, damn, he looks bad. And yesterday I got that info that, you know, he had passed away. They even sent me the video, you know, of how they 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 put him in, 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 in and it was sad because he 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 didn't have no clothes on and I was like why? Because usually you know they put a suit on you, and you know they told me I think that that was his last request. You know how it says that 
desnudo vine al mundo y desnudo me voy. I guess he requested, you know, that he knew he was gone. He knew he was going to go, but he was happy because he had he had a connection with God, you know. Some people might have thought he he had lost it, but he found God, man. He found God and he left the short, you know, that God had forgiven him for you know, for whatever harm he had done. Look at this little video that, you know, that w were one of his final messages that he had for the people that might have known him. Look at this. Hola. Dios me lo bendiga a cada uno de ustedes en el nombre de Jesús. El nombre mío es Johnny Fernández. Eh, yo cojo la calle como pinguita. Yo sé que muchos de ustedes me han conocido a mí. Han conocido el pasado mío, el futuro mío. El pasado mío fue muy oscuro. Hice mucho tiempo preso. Hice cosas desagradables. Vendía mucha droga. Caminé en un camino que nadie le agrada eso. Fui jefe de banda en la cárcel. Fui jefe de, de los rompebolas en la calle, de los trayectarios en la cárcel. Pero Tenía un vacío en mi alma, tenía un vacío en mi alma que a mí lo que, a mí lo que me da ganas de llorar, de dar el testimonio. Porque yo sé que solo hay un camino, y el único camino para llegar a Dios se llama Jesucristo. Él es el camino, la verdad y la vida. Y nadie viene al Padre si no es por Él. Yo tenía un vacío grande en mi vida, pero mi Rey y mi Salvador Jesucristo me llenó todo eso. La misma manera que lo hizo conmigo, la misma manera que lo puede hacer con cada uno de nosotros. Se lo hizo con Pablo, se lo hizo con Salvador Salvino, se lo hizo conmigo, Pinguita, que es una persona increíble y maravillosa, también lo puede hacer con cada uno de ustedes. Así que no hay excusa para que ustedes no vengan a Jesucristo. La religión no salva a nadie. A nadie salva la religión, ¿ok? Solo Cristo es único que salva como me salvó a mí y te puede salvar a ti si tú lo coges como tu único salvador en tu vida. Si, como te dije ahorita, si lo hizo como salvador y lo hizo conmigo, también lo hace contigo. A la juventud le digo que por favor venga a los pies de Jesucristo para tener vida eterna, para caminar por ese mar de cristal, ¿sí? Y esa calle de oro por ahí, yo en San Luis, vamos a caminar por la calle de oro y más de cristal y tú también lo puedes hacer si vienes a los pies de Jesucristo Él es el camino, la verdad y la vida y aparte de Él si no lo tienes, está frito mi hermanito Dios me lo bendiga a cada uno de ustedes en el nombre de Jesús Amén y Amén This was before you know, he came down uh, 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 on this last video that I saw, which I'm not going to show. And, and as you can see, you know, in his own way, he was letting people know, you know, that he, he had, you know, come straight with God. And I just wanted to do this podcast in memory of him. Um, I don't want to mention, you know, of, of the things that, that he told me because, you know, we was in church together for for a while. And I don't want to talk about his past or anything like that. I just want to remember him as somebody that was lost and found God. Or God found him because God had been looking for him. He was happy. He was happy. As you can see how he was saying, I, I know I'm going to walk those streets of gold. He really believed, you know, where he was going was the right place. And I just want to let any young buck know, man, that like he requested. I'm not even going to show that video. Like he requested, man. We come into this world butt naked. And we're going to leave this world butt naked too. Shout out to to his family, may, you know, may God put peace in their heart. I know a lot of people might be happy of anything he might have done wrong, but be assured that God forgave him for that. So you should also forgive him for that. And may his soul rest in peace. God bless.